All right, so for the first question, how social media contests can increase sales. So social media contests increase sales by first building your community. So basically building brand awareness. Um, the more people that repost your contest or participate in your contest, and if you're doing it correctly, then you're incorporating some form of repost this post or mention our company in your personal page, etc. cetera. Uh, so doing those little things within the contest will increase brand awareness, which will in turn grow your community base. Um, and then engagement. So if you are doing it correctly again, you should be incentivizing people to follow your page. So give them some sort of incentive to follow your page, like this post, comment on two other posts, something along those lines, but you should definitely be including follow, you must be following us in order to be eligible for this contest. Um, so in that way, you can also gain subscribers. Another thing that you can do is you can have people subscribe. You'll probably see this a lot in newsletters. So a company will say, participate in this contest. All you have to do is sign up and to sign up, you have to put your email and your name. And it's as simple as that. And once you have a list of everybody's emails, you can send out your newsletter to them every month, every week, depending on uh, how your newsletter is. But that's a huge way to use a contest to gain subscribers to your newsletter or even your page, like I said. Um, and then definitely use your own product as the prize. If you give away like a free iPad and your company is clothing, then what does that really do for you? If you give the prize being the actual product that you sell, you're gaining a potential customer from, so, so the winner gets that free product of yours. And they got it for free, yes, but if they like it and it does what they need it to do for them um, and it's a quality product, if you believe in your own product, then they're going to most likely come back for more. So, And then, of course, they'll recommend it to their friends. So if they win this free product and they enjoy it, they're going to recommend it to their friends and then their friends are going to go and buy the product, which will increase your sales. All right, so number two three tips for getting your social media audience audience engaged. So post videos, this is a huge thing. Um, it's not just about pictures on all your social media platforms. You should be incorporating videos as well. So make sure that they are the ideal length. For Facebook, it's a minute and 30 seconds. That's the ideal length for Facebook. Um, and for Twitter, it's a little longer, two minutes. For YouTube, depending on the topic, it can be between 10 minutes to 25 minutes. So that's like the sweet spot range. Um, so YouTube, you have a little bit more leeway and you can post longer videos than you would on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, Snapchat, but just make sure that you're posting videos because videos are very engaging if you can do them in the correct way. Um, and then the second would be share user generated content. So if your users and your customers um, are posting your uh, company name and they're posting uh, content with your name in it, then you should be posting that content on your own page. You should be giving them a little shout out. I'm going to go back to the um, clothing company example. So if you have a clothing company and you have people dressing up in your clothes and posting a picture and tagging your uh, company, you should definitely be uh, shouting them out on your page like, hey, this this woman looks beautiful in our clothing. Um, shout out to her, you know, something along those lines. So what that does is that builds your community. Um, it strengthens your community because the people that the people that are posting your content on their own pages, that's personal. So um, they're your probably your most loyal customers, your most loyal um, fans in a sense. So if you're shouting them out, that's just going to build even more rapport between um, those people and you and your company. And then it also encourages um, other people to do the same. So everybody wants a shout out. Everybody likes um, to have that free advertising of their, their personal page or whatnot. So just by shouting out people, you're also encouraging other people that might not have thought to post themselves on their page with you tagged to do so and then potentially be um, showcased on your page. 
Um, and then the third one is Pinterest and Instagram. So um, it says, please discuss the characteristics of Pinterest and Instagram. So Pinterest and Instagram are similar, but then they also do have some um, very clear differences. So they're both considered more artistic platforms because they're both very, um, the backbone of these posts are pictures, um, occasionally videos, but mostly pictures. Now, Instagram is more about sharing, whereas Pinterest is more about discovering. So to explain that, Instagram is more about people posting and showing off what they have, um, their life. And then Pinterest, people usually tend to use Pinterest to discover ideas, DIYs, um, party planning ideas. Basically, it's more of like a creative um, discovery page. 70% um, of Instagram users are under 35. So Instagram is definitely still that like 18 to 29 um, range of ages. That's the most active and they are majority women. And then Pinterest falls in line with this as well. The only difference is Pinterest has a little bit more leeway towards the older um, 30 to 49 age group of women, but they still are predominantly women on this page. And then number four, is discuss three content strategies for mobile phones to increase traffic flow to stores. So, for example, if you're a food service, you should be offering compatibility with programs such as Uber Eats um, and DoorDash, things like that. If you're not compatible with them, then a lot of the times people are gonna choose a different uh, restaurant or takeout service that is compatible with Uber Eats or DoorDash rather than yours. Um, that's just, that's just a, a technical thing. So it's just um, being available for different forms of um, service. And then branded mobile app consumers spend 90% of their time on apps versus webs. So you should be creating your own brand app. So if you don't have an app already for your company, then you should create one that's specific to your company. People are spending more time on their own individual apps that they have downloaded on their phone rather than on the internet. So website is not gonna cut it. You need to have an app that um, maybe offers certain discounts and certain um, promotions, uh, whatever it takes to get people to download your app and get on there. Another great thing that you can do is use QR codes. So. QR codes can be added to business cards, print advertising, brochures, flyers, um, receipts. So every receipt that somebody receives from buying a product, there's a QR code on there, which maybe has a promotion for another purchase that they might make. So that'll bring them back into the store. Um, and then like event tickets. So if it's, if it's a company that's um, offering certain events, then have a QR code on the ticket that will give them more information on details about parking, things such as that. Just get them, um, get them involved and get them onto your website or onto wherever your app, whatever it is that you want them to do online. QR codes are a great way to get from paper to a uh, mobile device. And then number five, why social media is valuable for today's youth. So. This is always a very controversial topic, um, but I strongly believe that it increases collaborative learning. So the youth nowadays is so much more open-minded than um, the generations before them, and it's mainly due to social media. So kids are exposed to a lot, um, a lot more different, uh, different perspectives and worldviews, which allows them to grow into their own their own views and their own thoughts rather than just what they grew up around um, what their family believes in so that's something that's changing with the youth and i think it's a really positive thing um, and then digital media technical skills so our youth is already i mean my little sister's already smarter with technology than i even am and i considered myself pretty decent compared to uh, the people before me. So it's just going to go on and on. The youth is always going to be more tech savvy. And this is a plus. This is a skill that they can bring into future jobs. Um, it's a technical skill. So digital media, communications, these are all things that kids need to know in order to be successful in the business world. So it's a huge skill to have. Um, and if they can't talk to people around them, having social media allows them to maybe reach out to somebody 
um, that they can talk to or they do feel comfortable talking to about certain things that they're going through. Um, and that's a mental health uh, plus for this. And then um, it gets them involved in causes that interest them. So there's so many causes um, in this world and there's so many different uh, subjects and campaigns that are going on and so kids can get involved in these and make a real world difference. Um, just by spreading the word on social media, spreading awareness. You see this a lot on Twitter, um, people spreading awareness to certain problems uh, that the world is going through. And it's, it's amazing. I mean, this is stuff that we probably would not see if it was just face-to-face -face contact all the time. This is something that, um, something can be going on across the world and our youth knows about it and they're, they're pushing for whatever cause it is that they feel. Um, personally touches them. So that's their way of making a real world impact at even a young age. It just gets the, their mind thinking in that certain way of making a difference. And it's a positive change.